Good evening. Good evening and welcome to our car service. Indeed. <laughs> now, at this moment in time, we don't know whether we will be having an in-person carol service or not. Hmm. Not sure yet. Um, the rules just seem to be very, very vague at the moment. Yeah, and the guidelines today aren't particularly clear. So? So by the time Sunday has come around, and you're watching this on Sunday, of course... We may well be at the hall for a carol service. Or, or... we may not. <laughs> so we're just going to take every day as it comes and... Um, just hope for the best. Yes, doesn't stop. So. Doesn't stop us celebrating Christmas. It doesn't. No, no. And, and I get fed up when politicians say Christmas is cancelled. Oh, Christmas no, isn't no. cancelled. <laughs> we can't cancel Christmas. Um, yeah. So. So here we are. Here we are. Yes. Have we got any announcements then? For the next two Sundays is going to be recorded. Yes. In worship. So it will start on six o'clock. Um, so if you're trying to get on before six o'clock, you won't be able to do that, but it will be available right on, right on six, six o'clock on yeah. Facebook and on YouTube. Yeah, and we're hoping that we will be a wee. Yes. <laughs> we are still holding out for that. The food bank is going to continue Yes. on Wednesdays and, and Thursdays. Eh, no, Fridays. Fridays. <laughs> Wednesdays and Fridays. Uh, the food bank will still continue. We're still getting used to it, aren't we? Yeah, I know. Yes. Yeah. So... I think. Is that the announcements? I think so, yes. I mean, th this this past week um, has been a, a sad week for us as a, a family. Um, my Aunt Christine, who was regularly uh, watching with us, um, passed away. She was seriously ill with motor neuron disease. And it is a release, but it's also still a, a real sadness. Um, to say goodbye to her. Um, she's been there for so many years and um, mm. obviously a big part of our family. So please remember my Uncle Bill, particularly in your prayers over this next wee while, please. And also last Sunday, my younger brother, Alistair, was admitted to hospital. He had a heart attack um, and seems to be recovering well from that. Um, so please remember Alistair and Kim in your prayers as well. Yeah. Tough week for the family. Yeah, just a bit of a tough week. Yeah, yeah. But we're getting there. We are. Yes. Yeah. yeah, amidst everything that's going on and the, the tiredness that's starting to set in. You're tired. Oh, yeah. I don't want to lie this morning. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, just having a kind of... We just had a kind of chilling day, haven't we? Yes. Well, trying to get organised well. for this. <laughs> this and yeah. that and the next. And the next. Yes. Yeah. So, shall we start with our first carol for this, this evening? Yes. I got the important announcement. I mean, cup of tea. Cup of tea or a half an hour. Well, yeah. A wee sip of water. water. Might need that. And it's just water. Good water. The voice says it's a very good today, so... Might just need that. Okay. Okay. Carol number 47. If you have a carol sheet, if not, joy to the world. The Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world. The Lord is come. Let earth receive her And wonders of his love, and 
As we continue on our Advent journey, and um, we uh, think today of the fourth candle on our Advent wreath, we have already lit three. It's now candle number four. And as we continue this Advent journey, the fourth candle that we light um, this evening it represents joy. And it says in Psalm 43, Send forth your light and truth. Let them guide me. Let them... Bring me to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my joy and my delight. I will praise you with the harp, O God, my God. And so during the past few weeks of Advent, as we've lit our candles, we've focused on what Scripture says, and we've taken time to think about what God's Word says to us. And his word has taught us that he has sent his light and truth into the world to save us from our sins and that he is faithful to care for his people. What a great God we serve. So come, let us adore him. Let's praise and worship him and let's find great joy in his presence. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, we praise and worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We praise your holy name and we thank you that we can indeed celebrate your birth. And we just think this evening, Lord, of those perhaps who need you in a very special way, that you will draw close to them. And um, all around when people seem to celebrate and maybe they don't feel like celebrating, in their hearts allow them to celebrate your birth because we celebrate Christmas because of your coming to earth. And so just be with us in this time of worship as we share together this evening. We ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. A dangerous time, Christmas, you know. Yeah? What's happened? Fingers got kind of warm there. Oh dear. As you can see, we've kind of changed <laughs> our scenery a bit this yeah. week. The back bit's kind of the same. We've allowed our Christmas tree uh, to come in. So... That's out, the back. that's out the back. That's out. <laughs> well, it's not our back door. The back door's kind of there. <laughs> These are the doors out of our dining area, kitchen, whatever. And uh, yeah, and we thought we would share our Christmas tree with you this evening. No sharing the presents under them. No, you're not. <laughs> well, yeah, it's coming up for your birthday as well, isn't yeah. it? Uh-huh. No, we're not going to talk about that one. Woohoo! <laughs> no bus pass yet. Have to wait another year. Okay. Just one though. We're going to turn to another carol, number 55. <coughs> number 55. O come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. O come ye, O come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of Angels. O come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. O come, all ye Oh, come. 
Wonderful to have the, so many of these older carols that uh, we share year after year after year. And they bring to us a comfort of a story that we know so well. And yet there's always something more for us to learn from that story. We're going to share together in our first scripture reading. And it's taken from Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. Verses 2 and then 6 and 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born. To us a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from the ti this time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Amen. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. And we turn to our next carol. It's number 63. Number 63. Once in Royal David City stood a lonely cattle shed where a mother laid her baby in a manger for his bed. Mary was that mother mild. Jesus Christ, her little child. Once in royal David city stood a lonely cattle shed where a mother laid her baby in a winter for his bed. Oh, 
And our second scripture reading is taken from St Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, and it's verses 26 to 28. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Amen. Mm. Good to turn to a very familiar carol now as well. Number three. Number three? Yes. Number 70. Number 70. Three in the old carol book. Yes. <laughs> Did I write that on You wrote that. <laughs> and I thought, that's not right. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. Round the virgin, mother and child, holy infant, tender and mild, rest in heavenly peace. <laughs> We had a bit of a discussion before about the way you should put your cap on this one, didn't we? We did. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully I'll be able to go to the one notes and the high notes. Well that's why I thought maybe I should put it up a bit. <laughs> so Share another scripture reading now. This one is taken from St Luke's Gospel, chapter 2. St Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, in the first seven verses. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him 
and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. And she wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Amen. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. We're going to turn to Carol number 59. <clears throat> number 59. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark street shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. Little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark streets shine the everlasting light. Scripture reading is from St Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, continuing on, uh, reading from verse 8 through to verse 16. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Thank you. Got a time to another carol. Number five. Number five. It was on a starry night when the hills were bright, earthly sleeping, sleeping calm and still, then in a cattle shed, in a manger bed, a boy was born, king of all the world. <clears throat> It was on a starry night when the hills were bright, if they sleeping, sleeping calm and still, and in a cattle shed, in a manger bed, a boy was born. And all the angels sang for him, the bells of heaven rang for him, for the boy was born, king of all the world. And all the angels sang for him, the bells of heaven rang for him, for the boy was born, king of all the world. Soon the shepherds came that day, where the baby lay, and were kneeling, kneeling by his side, and their hearts believed again, for the peace of man. For a boy was born, king of all the world. And all the angels sang for him, the bells of heaven rang for him. For a boy was born, king of all the world. And all the angels sang for him, the bells of heaven. One more scripture reading, and it's taken from St Luke's Gospel, sorry, St Matthew's Gospel, chapter 2. St Matthew's Gospel, chapter 2, and the first 11 verses. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born? King of the Jews. We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, Report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then 
they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. Amen. We're going to turn to carol number 12, number 12. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the bright sky looked down where they lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep. few weeks we have uh, looked at various journeys that have been undertaken as part of uh, the Christmas story, part of the Nativity story and uh, this evening we looked at a number of different scripture readings that take us along part of that journey. So many journeys undertaken for this very special event and we're thinking tonight particularly about the journey of celebration because it is a time of celebration for all people. That's what the angels told the, the shepherds who were out waiting in the field, watching over their sheep, that this was good news for all mankind, for all humanity, that this was a time of celebration. Celebrate the newborn king. That's what the wise men were coming they were coming to see a newborn king. It was a time of celebration. They were so excited that they had packed everything up and they had trekked for we don't know how long, but anything up to two years. They undertook this massive journey to come and see the baby Jesus, the newborn king. It was a time of celebration. Can you imagine their excitement as it came to finding out that he was just a few miles away? But I won't dwell on that too much because we've still got that journey to come next week. Indeed. So for those all involved in the Christmas story there, there are so many different people who are excited and there's the occasional one who's not if you picked up on that story. Herod was not pleased. All of Jerusalem was disturbed. Well all of those who were close to King Herod 
were disturbed by the news of a newborn king. Those who worked around the palace would know that this could well be trouble because Herod was intensely jealous, intensely jealous and suspicious of his own family members, let alone a newborn king born just a few miles away. This, in amongst all of the journeys of celebration, and we are still celebrating, celebrating the fact that Jesus has come amongst us. The fact that Jesus came from heaven to earth. That God didn't leave us just in a state of hopelessness and despair. And I know that there are many people who are in a state of hopelessness and despair at this time. There's so much difficulty, so much uncertainty as there has been for almost two years now. So many times when we don't know really from one day to the next how things are going to be. At the time of us recording this, we don't know whether we will be able to have worship together at this time in our hall or whether we'll be sat in the house watching this with you. We don't know. But we still celebrate Christmas. We still still celebrate our newborn king. We've moved into our new house just a few weeks ago, but the Christmas tree is up. It's not a hat, and I did wonder whether <laughs> you know I'd be getting comments about my lovely hat, but it's not a hat, it's a Christmas tree, and we've got the Christmas decorations out beside us. Some of them some of them have not made it out this year, some of them have. There are different decorations through in the sitting room. But we are celebrating Christmas regardless of the uncertainty that we have, because we do have a certainty that that first Christmas did happen. We do have a certainty that God saw the need that we were in and decided to do something about it. We do have something to celebrate because Jesus came amongst us to be our saviour. Isabel's already said about presents under the Christmas tree that she's not sharing with you. Just terrible that. <laughs> yeah. We will be looking perhaps at the presents that the wise men brought to Jesus next week and the significance that each of them has. It's one of the things that we always try to do when Christmas comes around is think about the people who are receiving gifts. Things that they are interested in and things that they would really like. The temptation really is to give gifts that you would like to receive. But we actually try to think about the person who's receiving. The things that they are interested in and the things that would make them particularly happy. But we also know that we have something to celebrate in the gift that's been given to all of us. If only we're willing to accept it. I think there's few things sadder than a present that's left unopened underneath the tree. When somebody's gone to all the bother of getting a gift and it's not opened. It's just left there to wait until somebody decides to do something with it. For a lot of people, that's what's happened with Jesus. Christmas comes around each year and people join in whatever festivities they're allowed to take part in. They enjoy themselves, they have a party or not. They eat lots of food if they're able to. They get a few days off work maybe. They relax. But they don't give a second thought to Jesus. And that seems utterly bizarre that a holiday in honour of Christ is one where people would ignore Christ. It is Christ Mass. 
time when we celebrate the birth of Jesus, when we celebrate God coming amongst us. Despite our weaknesses, our failings, the times when we have messed up, despite the fact that we could not put ourselves right with God, no matter how hard we tried, Christ was sent amongst us and he was sent to live that spotless, pure life and then give himself as a sacrifice on the cross. I've seen on my Facebook news feed again um, adverts for various things, but in amongst them was a, a t-shirt and on this t-shirt it's a picture of the nativity scene and underneath it says, spoiler alert, he dies. And I just want to see the back of that t-shirt to see the other spoiler alert, which says he is resurrected and pays the price of our sins so that we can have eternal life. Those people who have made that t-shirt and don't recognise the full significance of Jesus and his life. I pray for them at some point they will indeed come to know Jesus Christ as their saviour, as he is for me and I pray he is for you too. It is a journey of celebration and so we will finish with a song of celebration. Carol number 18. Carol number 18. See him lying on a bed of straw, a draughty stable with an open door, Mary cradling the babe she bore, the Prince of Glory is his name. See him lying on a bed of straw, a draughty stable with an open door, Mary cradling the babe she bore, the Prince of Glory is his name. Across the skies, show where Jesus in the manger lies. Shepherds with him from your stupid rise to see the Savior of the world. Oh, the carry me to Bethlehem to see the Lord appear to man, just as poor as was the stable man, the Prince of Glory when he came. Bring God's glory to the heart of God. Sing that Bethlehem's little baby can be salvation to the soul. Oh, the coming to Bethlehem to see the Lord appear to man, just as poor as was a stable man, the Prince of Glory when he came. From your poverty, from your legal since eternity, my forgiveness by your death for me, child of sorrow for my joy. Oh, the coming into Bethlehem to see the Lord appear to man, just as poor as was the stable man, the Prince of Glory when he came. We thank you again for joining us um, in this carol service um, and we pray that you indeed have a, a great Christmas um, and may you indeed, um, as you've gone on this journey, that um, as we near that journey's end, that you will indeed open the gift of Jesus um, that God has given to you. We are going to light a candle as usual and just got a short Advent prayer to share with you.
And so we pray. Teach us to be open, God, that we may learn to seek you in the unexpected, to look for you in the unrecognised, to touch you in the different. But at this moment, help us to find you, O Lord, right here before us. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for joining with us again. Um, we look forward to sharing with you again next Sunday. At six o'clock. At six o'clock. Have a fantastic Christmas time. Bye, sure.